There are many nations in the world today that could easily be labeled as superpowers. These are the countries that are able to have such economic, military, and other kinds of powers that their influence affects everyone in the world. If something were to happen to them, or be done by them on a large scale, everyone would be affected by the ripples they caused. The United States is one such superpower, and at times they're not afraid to show it. And there's a reason that other superpowers don't openly go into conflict with the United States, because they know it'll backfire on them. Join us as we have a look at 20 reasons you shouldn't mess with the USA. Number 20. Massive Ordnance Penetrator Bomb now, I'll begin with one very simple and basic question. Why are superpowers known as superpowers? There are multiple reasons that this can be, as I teased in the intro. One of those reasons is that they have a huge economic base and that makes them valuable to the world at large. But most times it has to do with military power. And ever since World War II, the biggest weapon that superpower nations has stockpiled are nuclear bombs and similar weapons of mass destruction. Despite all the talks that Armageddon is nigh, or that we're one day away from World War III, it is these weapons of mass destruction that actually act as a reason why we have not gone to war on that scale yet. Because since multiple superpower nations have war weapons of mass destruction, if they were to go to war with one another, they'd end up blowing each other up. That brings me to the massive ordnance penetrator bomb that the United States has. This weapon is not a recent one and has been held by the United States for over a decade. The goal of the weapon is very simple. A plane would drop it into an area or a facility that an enemy nation's nuclear weapons or other weapons of mass destruction are held. The explosion that will happen will not just hit the facility, but it would actually penetrate the ground beneath it to ensure that any weapons that are underground are also hit with the blast as well. If not obvious, having the weapons of mass destruction detonate on enemy soil versus the soil of the United States is the goal. It gets rid of the weapons and also deals with a literal massive blow to the opposing force. The United States has had over a decade to stockpile all of these bombs so that they have enough for however many facilities that they need to go after. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the fancy topic. For now, we're going to get a little abstract. You see, the weapons and abilities of the United States that you're going to see and hear about in this list are only being named because we know that they exist, as in they're declassified enough that everyone knows of their existence. However, what superpower in their right mind would tell the world everything that they have in their arsenal? Well, exactly, and that's the thing. The United States is already terrifying with weapons that we do know about, so now imagine if we knew all of what they had and what those things could do. I'm not trying to sound all secret squirrel here, but the point is valid. We know that for decades, the United States and other world powers, to be clear, have been working in secret on various projects that could up their arsenal. Plus, it's not only the military that would be working on such things, there are plenty of other groups who work on projects in secret. Don't forget, it was actually the CIA who did MKUltra and numerous other terrible experiments, all for the sake of saving the country. So, when it comes right down to it, we'll likely never know the full capabilities of the United States until they either tell us or show us, and neither is an appealing option. As always, let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below using the hashtag FancyTopic. Number 19. Ohio-class nuclear submarines Naval warfare is something that has grown to surprising heights over the course of history. It used to be simple wooden ships that would ram into each other to make them useless, and then it was the battle of gunpowder and cannonballs. Eventually, we got to steel vessels that could house mighty weapons, and after that came the submarine. 
Fast forward to now, and the United States, amongst others, uses submarines for all kinds of purposes, but it is the Ohio-class nuclear submarine that can make the United States a deadly threat to any foe. And why is that? Well, first of all, they're very stealthy. These are submarines that you're not going to know about until it's too late. And that's the other thing that makes them so terrifying. There are at least 20 of them in the world that we know of, but they are each loaded with enough missiles to ensure that they could rain fire down on an enemy or enemies without breaking a sweat. So, let's say there are 15 of them. Each of them can hold anywhere from 16 to 24 missiles of various kinds, which also includes nuclear missiles, and that means that the United States could strategically place them in key parts of the Seven Oceans, and if they felt threatened by anyone or anything, they could give the order and the missiles would soon rain down from the sky. So if each of those 15 submarines in the scenario launched 15 missiles, that's 225 missiles hitting 225 targets all over the world, and it seems rather scary. The only reason that there are less than 20 that we know of is because it would be advised that they didn't need any more to do the dirty work that's required. So, just imagine that if within the next year or so, they decided to double or even triple that amount. Number 18. AC-130H Spectre Gunship When you have the title of gunship, you very quickly know what to expect. It's a ship that has guns, and probably lots of them, and they'll all likely have a big amount of firepower that will make you shiver in your boots. Arguably, the most interesting thing about this gunship is the fact that it was formerly a cargo ship that they then decided to make more offensive. This gunship is outfitted with cannons, howitzers, and gatling guns. All three on their own could make a plane such as this a deadly threat in the skies and to those on the ground. But when you have all three of them on the vessel, well, all of a sudden you have no choice but to wonder if it's a good idea to even mess with the thing. But here's a hint. It's not. It should be noted that this is not the ship you would immediately fear during a war or even a battle scenario, but it is used in high-stress situations to protect others. For example, the Air Force uses this ship during their special operations missions, which shows just how much faith they have in it to bring it onto such an important endeavor. It also used to defend other craft when on certain missions, and it can also do air-to-ground attacks on its own. If need be, it can send reconnaissance craft as well, and albeit one that can fight its way out of a jam should it get into one. And to top it all off, this gunship is used to protect U.S. bases and other allies. So in many ways, the vessel is a perfect example of taking something basic and then turning it into a multi-purpose tool, and one that is quite heavily armed, I might add. Number 17. B-2 Spirit Bomber The last plane I showed you is the essence of bigger is better, but that doesn't mean that all the craft in the United States are big and bulky. One of the most important creations they ever made was that of the B-2 Spirit Bomber. The reason it's so important and is a proven commodity is its stealth capabilities. The design of the craft ensures that it cannot be easily picked up by enemy radar, plus they're constantly evolving the materials and systems on it to adapt to the new defenses that'll try to catch it. It is this craft that the United States sent in on night one of many Allied efforts or wars to get information and then bug out. It's lightning fast and can collect data at an incredible rate, which is exactly what the U.S. needs before it can make calculated strikes on its enemies. But don't think that it can only do in and out missions. During the war in Afghanistan, it would be the B-2 Spirit bomber that went on a mission that went 44 hours and then had a 45-minute break until it got back into the field for another 30 hours. That makes it the longest aerial combat mission in history, and it would be done by the B-2 Spirit Bomber. And it has combat capabilities as well, which includes being able to carry a payload of 20 tons. Considering it can go over 6,000 nautical miles without refueling, that means that the B-2 Spirit Bomber can go just about anywhere that it wants to before being launched and drop off a surprise to its enemies and then be gone before they can do anything about it. Number 16. The M67 Fragmentation Grenade 
So far I've shown you a lot of super weapons and vehicles that the United States has, but there are going to be instances when those weapons won't be needed or able to be used in the field of combat. That's why the United States has multiple branches of the military with trained soldiers to deal with ground-level combat, and not surprisingly, they're outfitted with some of the deadliest tools out there. One of which is the M67 Fragmentation Grenade. As you likely know, there are many kinds of grenades in the world, and they all have their various uses. The M67 Frag Grenade is meant to do maximum damage to the enemy by design. Within the grenade are pieces of steel that will not be melted by an explosion. Instead, they'll be propelled by that explosion and become deadly pieces of ammo that can rip through a person's body. Or, at the very least, it can injure and make them unlikely to go back to battle. Further showing the deadliness of this grenade, it can be thrown by a person pretty far, and when it explodes, it has a range of about 45 feet. Within that range, if you're within 15 feet, you're going to have a high probability of death. So now imagine a whole squad of soldiers lobbing these grenades into an enemy encampment. The devastation would be rather immense, which is the point. It also should be noted that when it comes to grenades, they can be easy to make and they're easy to upgrade. The M67 frag grenade is actually an improvement over ones that were used in wars past, and so now just imagine the next upgrade and the damage that it may do. Sometimes it's the small tools that do the best work. Number 15. The MQ-9 Reaper Now, I've already shown you one intelligence collection device via the Spirit Bomber, but now let's show you another one, the MQ-9 Reaper. Why is this one such a big gain for the United States? Well, first and foremost, it's an unmanned drone. The stealth bomber needs a pilot, but this vehicle of destruction and intelligence does not. Due to that fact, it has an incredible range and the ability to loiter in the air, collecting all sorts of data for the United States. As stated, it's primarily used to collect intelligence and has a range of systems that's going to allow you to do that very well. However, if the mission needs a more emphatic touch, the MQ-9 Reaper is equipped not only with special missiles, but powerful systems that will allow it to do precision strikes on the ground or at other targets in the air. In other words, this UAV has the power to do a lot of things, and that's why the United States loves to use it. Drones like these are essential in their ever growing arsenal, and could you imagine a fleet of these going through the air toward a set of targets? It would be absolutely terrifying. Number 14. The M240 Series Medium Machine Gun Heading back to soldiers on the ground, it's a well-known fact that those who are the best equipped for battle stand a much greater chance of surviving it. Firearms of all kinds have been developed by the United States over the years, and as a result, they've made some very powerful weapons for their ground forces. Currently, the M240 series medium machine gun is one of the best. As a result, the machine gun can be found all throughout the ranks of the U.S. military, which includes being with their special forces units, which should prove how reliable and useful they are. In fact, the M240 is known for its reliability as well as the ability to put the enemy down with its round. Another clever feature of this weapon is that it doesn't only have the ability to be used by soldiers on the ground, it can actually be put onto mounts for better accuracy or mounted onto helicopters and ships for various purposes. And when you have a weapon that can fit all sorts of needs and be on various craft, you then have a winner. Number 13. The AH-64 Apache Easily one of the more iconic aircraft in the United States Air Force, the AH-64 Apache is an attack helicopter that's used for many missions. While jet planes and ones like the Stealth Bomber are used for long-range missions, it's craft like the AH-64 Apache that do the more short-range missions that require extraction or heavy firepower. In fact, this is the kind of craft that you would rely on to do those dirty missions that you know you aren't going to do smoothly. The craft would be built to be an offensive powerhouse while also surviving just about anything you could throw at it. Another key feature is its night vision ability that makes it perfect for nighttime missions when stealth becomes key. But make no mistake, 
When it needs to get loud, it will. It's armed with all sorts of missiles and can have ones attached to perfectly suit whatever mission it's on. It has precision guidance systems, and if there are enemies who are too close for missile fire, the machine guns will be there and mow down the foes. A squadron of these ships coming your way would be a terrible thing, for you that is. Number 12. M1 Abrams the invention of the tank back in World War I was a game-changer for warfare as a whole. They were made to respond to the problems of trench warfare, but soon they became instrumental in offenses that would shape the world for decades to come. They're known for their incredible armor, heavy firepower, and their mobility in terms of how they can aim and fire massive shells. The one that the U.S. uses to great effect is the M1 Abrams. Many consider it to be one of the best tanks on the planet, and it has a track record that proves that it works in the field. The M1 Abrams served in both Gulf Wars, and not a single one would be taken out by enemy forces. It was also this tank that helped to lead the charge to capture Saddam Hussein. But in recent years, the M1 Abrams has gotten upgrades, and it's now better armed as a vehicle, and has better communication systems and can move with less fuel usage. It's hard to know when the tank will be back in action, but when it does get back into the field, the enemy had better watch out. Number 11. The M109A6 Paladin at first glance, the M109A6 Paladin looks like a tank, but it's actually not. It's a mobile howitzer with incredible capabilities. It's known as a self-propelled howitzer because there is a crew inside that are able to move the vehicle on a whim. In fact, that's part of what makes this vehicle so incredible. Typically, howitzers are stationary. They're on the ground and fire at targets and hope that they hit them and can be moved later when the mission requires it. The M109A6 Paladin breaks that mold by being being able to move on its own, and what's more, it can stay locked on a target as it moves, thanks to its systems and the four-man crew that's inside. It even has a semi-automatic loading system, which means that you can fire at a much faster rate than the previous howitzers could. And that ability to run and gun makes it so that enemies can't fire upon it very easily to stop the assault. And obviously, that's a big deal as well. So, you can see why the United States likes this vehicle, because it helps them out in all sorts of ways. Number 10. Tow Anti-Tank Missile Here's a weapon that's a bit self-explanatory. When the more effective tanks came into play during World War II, such as with the German Panzers, other nations would face a problem. The tanks were so well protected that basic gunfire would do nothing to them. You could hit them with grenades or rocket launchers, in theory, but that puts your soldiers at risk. And trying to go tank against tank would usually end in mutual destruction. Fast forward to now, and you have the TOW anti-tank missile, a weapon system that's so reliable and effective that over 40 countries in the world use it. The system has a dedicated guidance system so that it can lock onto a target and destroy it without fail. It can also be used to destroy enemy fortifications and certain other vehicles that troops might think are a hassle, which in combat can mean a lot of things. Number 9. The M250 Caliber Machine Gun Despite what people tell you, bigger is not always better. There are plenty of situations where you may need a smaller item to get the job done, such as with precise strikes. But on the battlefield, enemy forces coming your way, and you need to take them all down. It helps to have the biggest gun and the biggest bullets. That's where the M250 caliber machine gun comes into play, because as you hopefully have known by now, the 50 cal is one of the biggest rounds of ammunition that you can get for a gun that's used by a human being. It's able to be wielded semi-automatic or automatic style, and it even has the ability to reduce the muzzle flash so that you can't see where you're being shot from. Not that it matters, because if you're hit by one round of a 50 cal gun, then death is likely your only option. Number 8. The M72 Light Anti-Armor Weapon 
As you've already seen one anti-tank weapon, you might not have noticed that this device isn't the most portable of tools. It has to be mounted to the ground and then perfectly aimed to lock onto a foe, and if you waste too much time, you could get shot. That's where something like the M72 light anti-armor weapon comes into play. This is a portable anti-tank weapon that can do damage to most tanks in the field right now. And it's true that it doesn't have a guidance system outside of your own two eyeballs, but you can work around that. The irony of this device is that it's not a new thing, it's actually been around for decades and was even used during the Vietnam War. While not as impressive as other anti-tank weaponry, it can get the job done when used properly. Number 7. The M777 Howitzer while the more mobile howitzers may seem like something that would be implemented at large, there are still some benefits to using the more standard models, and the M777 howitzer has been in use by the United States since 2005. It comes with many upgraded features that make it better than the previous models. For example, this is a howitzer that is 9,000 pounds lighter. Sure, it's still a heavy beast that needs a tow truck to move it, but the lighter weight ensures that it can get to the next place to fire quickly. Time management and speedy departures can be vital in the field. Plus, despite losing all that weight, it's still an incredibly accurate howitzer that's able to support the troops in the field, and it's always better to have a variety of weapons instead of just relying on one version. Number 6. The Lockheed Martin Boeing F-22 Raptor now, we've been on the ground for too long, so we'll get back to the sky to talk about one of the best jet fighters ever made. That would be the Lockheed Martin Boeing F-22 Raptor. Here's the model that's so great that the United States has been using it for years without regrets, which is always a good thing when you're talking about a purchase that you've made. In fact, it's so good that the current version is the fifth generation of the fighter, and the whole family has been in service for over 25 years. The craft would be designed for many things, which includes being an air superiority craft. That means that it fights other jets and actually wins, and doing ground attacks, recon, and more. This is one of the best, if not the best in many people's eyes, and you can see why the United States has so many of them at their beck and call. Number 5. The Bell AH-1 Cobra the very first Bell attack helicopter was a revolutionary step forward for the United States and how it used helicopters in the field. It was the first true attack copter and was meant to support the troop transports in the field. Fast forward to now and you have the Bell AH-1 Cobra, another brilliantly designed attack copter that can help out troops on the ground or take out enemy troops and fortifications with its impressive massive weaponry. Aside from missiles, right under the nose of the helicopter is a mount that can handle machine guns, cannons, and grenade launchers and fire them with impressive accuracy. That means no matter the situation the copter is in, it can fire what's needed to make the enemy scurry away. The legacy of the Bell Cobra copter is strong and it's going to keep on growing. Number 4. The Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II while the last jet that I talked about might arguably be the best in the world at what it does, the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II is one that can boast how it's one of the most advanced jet fighters in the world today. What does that mean? Well, through several advancements, this jet has a system that can allow a pilot to be fully aware of the situation they're in and then adapt to it so that they can come out on the very top. Over a dozen nations have the Lockheed Martin F-35 Lightning II, and they use it as one of the backbones of their fighting force. You don't do that unless you know that the craft can get the job done. Number 3. The A-10 Warthog you ever look at something and say, that's built to kill? Well, the A-10 Warthog might give you that feeling, because when you look at this beast of a plane, you can definitely tell that it's not made to play nice. It was built to force others to play nice, or else feel its wrath. To say that this plane has a lot of armaments is an understatement. It's almost overloaded with weapons, so that it can handle any situation that it's put into. 
For example, it can be sent to an area that's full of mines and disperse a type of bomb that'll set them all off, saving soldiers' lives in the process. It also has Sidewinder missiles that can take down enemy craft that comes its way. Number 2. The 81mm Mortar the mortar has been a part of warfare for a long time and for very good reason. They're easily set up, they can be aimed rather accurately, and when you fire them, it can send a payload to an enemy location that can either hurt enemy soldiers or embankments or just scare the ever-living daylights out of them. The 81mm mortar is the current that the military uses to this day and has been in use for some time. Due to how it's crafted, it can be used for short-range, medium, and even long-range attacks. Plus, it can be put onto the backs of soldiers like paratroopers to ensure that they can have it with them when they land in enemy territory. Number 1. The M249 Squad Automatic Weapon We'll end with another weapon that soldiers often take with them into the field. The M249 Squad automatic weapon was not made by Americans, but actually it's of a Belgian design. However, the United States would like it so much that they adapted it to their own needs and purposes. Hence, the M249 Squad automatic weapon is in use today by many different parts of the U.S. military and is very appreciated by the forces that wield it. The automatic weapon has quite a range and can be outfitted with different kinds of ammunition depending on what's available. It has deep penetrating power and so is perfect for all sorts of combat strikes or suppressing fire. And either way, a soldier is going to be happy to use this thing in a fight. That's all from the realm of the United States of America and why people should not mess with the country unless they know they can take them on. Were you shocked by any of the abilities that the United States has? And which of these weapons impressed you the most? Do you think that the USA is actually hiding some of its super special abilities from the world just in case of an attack? As always, be sure to let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool things that are showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. Next time.